guys, Ralph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness on this terrific, terrific Tuesday here in Connecticut. Life's good, man. Henri is gone. Anyway, I take that back. There's a little lingering humidity that is very much tropical, not, uh, not usual Connecticut fare. But anyway, you saw the thumbnail. What Vacchiano means to me. Guys, I could talk about this for weeks. But we'll try to condense it into 10 minutes and you get the idea. I played a lot today. Let's see if I have anything left. Let me honk and we'll talk about Vacchiano. Lemonade. Now, if Akiano would heard me do that, Salamone, what mouthpiece you got? Is that, a, is that a cheater? That was a cheater. Anyway, I'll try to get to that. Now, the next few days I am going to talk about I had the good fortune and I feel absolutely blessed to have been uh, the student of four of what I consider to be the greatest, not only trumpet players, but pedagogues in the history of trumpet. Vacchiano, Mel Broyles, John Ware, and of course, Jerry. And I'm going to talk about them as best I can. Each one, as I said, I could talk forever. I could talk forever. We'll try to cram it in 10 minutes. Anyway, William Vacchiano, what can I say? He's the best. He's the best orchestral teacher by any stretch of the imagination. There is no two, three, four, five. The next one is like eight. The best orchestral teacher that ever lived. And I had the good fortune of playing for him for four straight years and several drop-ins for years and years after that. Um, he's actually a relative, as I told you. His brother, older brother Milo, married my grandfather's sister, Annie Salamone. And I met him when I was younger at a couple family functions. He didn't get to Maine that much. He didn't get to Maine that much. But um, basically family stuff. One was a wedding, one was a funeral. The funeral was very, very somber. He didn't say much. The wedding, hey, I heard about you. You're pretty good, aren't you? Let me explain that. Now, growing up in Portland, Maine, as a trumpet player, uh, I was constantly, constantly compared to Vacchiano. <laughs> Try that on for size. Guys, I make no bones about it. I, I have better chops than him, but his gray matter was so far superior to anybody's and certainly mine, that I was not on that level. But lots of people are not. Nobody was on that level, so I feel a little better than that. But anyway, and growing up in Portland, Maine, being a hotshot trumpet player, especially once I got into high school, he went to the same high school I did. He played in the same youth symphony I did. He played and subbed in the Portland, Maine symphony like I did when I was in high school and when I came back from college and all that sort of stuff. And we played in the same concert bands. Concert bands were big back in the late 60s. Big. And especially around Portland, Maine. There was lots of them. Community bands, but they were good. Uh, there was two in particular that I uh, played with. Subs, you know, in high school. And certainly when I came back, you know, in summers for college. You know, out in the gazebo, you know, 4th of July and all that sort of stuff. And just playing all the war horses. But the reason I, I um, mention those um, concert bands 
is because in the Portland Symphony too, the concert bands had all of Vacchiano's cronies from back in the day, all his high school friends. And I'll tell you what, man, they were some good players, man, some good players. And every single one of them, when I play, you know, trumpeter's lullaby or whatever the case, I'd be soloed. Yeah, you're good, kid, but you got to get to New York and study with Vacchiano. Nobody called him William. It was always Vacchiano, Vacchiano, Vacchiano. And I referred to him as that, too. Now, when it came time to pick a college, there was no question. I had to study with Vacchiano. Um, I didn't know how to go about it. Some of his cronies literally got in touch with him. And my father got in touch with him as well. Okay? Uh, he's quite good. He's applying at this, 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 this. But he would certainly love to study with you. Okay. I can't get him into Juilliard. It's too late. Never heard me play. It's too late to get into Juilliard. There is an opening in Manhattan. But I also teach at Manus. It's a small college. He might, he'll probably play more. Manhattan is very big with tons of trumpet players, he said. He'll probably play more if he goes to Manus. So, make a long story short, I ended up at Manus, and there it goes. And I've to told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. I think it's an absolutely hilarious story. My first lesson with Vacchiano, I signed out, he was signed out at a certain practice room at Manus, and I signed out like three straight hours, the room right next to him. And when you're young and stupid like me, how do you impress people with high notes? Well, high notes didn't impress Vacchiano at all. But sure enough, I spent three hours. And at that time, F, G, strained. I hadn't really gotten in with Jerry yet, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But I was enamored with high notes. Finally, he said, oh my, was that you next door? I said, yeah, that was me. He said, man, you can play some high notes. He was just sitting. He says, Selman, what's your highest note? I said, ah, an F, G. He says, I can open up this window, throw out a brick. Chances are I'd hit somebody with a high F. What did I do? I'm so stupid, I went and looked out the window. I thought there was a trumpet player out there playing high Fs. I turn around, he's got his head in his hands. He says, take out the arbor book. He says, Salamone, if you can't transpose, get out of town. And there it started. There it started. And for the next four years, man, he killed me. There was no uh, family. Uh, he was a dictator. And it wasn't just with me. He might have been warm and fuzzy with some of the other guys. But, man, he was an animal. Just this is what you got to do. This is all you got to do. Blah, 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 blah. And he was a dictator. Uh, very, very authoritarian Italian. I'm right, I'm the professor. And uh, it was tough. And it was all transposition. Looking back on it now, I thank God. Guys, that transposition, you could, by the time we were done, after four years of this mental beating, and remember, it's all math. He, he went to... Uh, Initially went to New York on St. John's as a full scholarship for an accountant. His buddy asked him if he would uh, like to try out for Juilliard. They were auditioning for Schlossberg. He went up there and got the uh, got into Juilliard. The rest is history. But anyway, what he meant to me, um, and just killed me, killed me with the uh, transposition, um, and everybody, everybody. A lot of people dropped out. I loved it. As much as hard as it was, I loved every bit of it. Okay? Now, we fought about the mouthpieces. Lots of people did. Lots of people did. They didn't buy the mouthpiece stuff. Broyles didn't. John Ware did it. And we'll get to that in a minute. You know, the next couple days. Okay? And he always wanted me to play, because I had pretty good chops. Sound money. Have such a good lip. Why don't you play a big mouthpiece? He says, Salmi, this, this is his logic. Let me ask you, if, and I was on a 10 and a half C at the time. He says, if you and I are carrying a load up a hill, 
and he says, mine is 100 pounds, yours is 10 pounds. Who's going to be stronger when they get up to the top of the hill? In other words, the big mouthpiece will make you stronger. And I said, that may be true, but I'm going to put the load on a dolly, and I'm going to make 10 trips in the time you make one, and I'm not going to have a sore back when I get up to the top. He didn't like that. You don't talk to Vacchiano. <laughs> anyway, we did have a, a tug of war with the mouthpieces. Once again, I wasn't the only one. But I'll tell you what, guys. The, the, the depth of his knowledge for the orchestra is unparalleled. Unparalleled. What other conduct, what other trumpet teacher ever can we go over Mahler fifth one? So when you play with Bernstein, he's going to want it this way. And if you're going to do it with um, Bruno Walter, he's going to want it this, and he's going to want it very Germanic, so you have your, your rotary valve trumpet. I mean, the, the, it just extraordinary what he could talk about in an hour lesson. Your mind was buzzing, and all you wanted to do was go practice. All you wanted to do was go practice. Um, again, when it came time to audition, I'm skipping so much stuff here, man. When it came time to audition for the North Carolina Opera, which was my first gig out of college, uh, I wanted to be Mel Bryles. And when that came up, I fell short. But when that came up, I jumped at it. And I went back with one of Jerry's mouthpieces. Again, I was... Uh, graduated by this time, it was maybe six months to a year, I don't remember the exact time, after I graduated. And um, finally, Jerry gave me, you know, bored this out, all this sort of stuff, and it was really sounding good. And I went and took a lesson with him, and he killed me. He killed me. Just ran through everything. Everything. Now try it on a C trumpet. Now try it on a D trumpet. I think he and he got through and he finally gave me his seal of approval. Sound mine. Sounds good. Sounds good. You play like that, you're, you're going to do well. That was like the blessing that I, I almost cried. I almost cried. But I'll tell you what, this is the guy that brought me to New York. Uh, he just beat me up while he had me. And I appreciate that. I'm a better man for it, a better trumpet player for it. And I'll tell you what, whenever we go anywhere, as we go on the road or anything like that, and we start talking shop with all the guys and everything, well, this, he says, this, he says, every single time. I could just say, well, I studied with William Vacchiano, and he said this. I win. I win. That was the power that he held over the profession for a long time. The best trumpet player, First trumpet player for a long time, 36 years. Her, Seth, and Mel and everything, guys came along with better chops, but for a long time, 36 years, and the best teacher that ever lived. And Bill, I know I wasn't your best student, but I thank God every day that I had the good fortune to study with you. God bless you. I know you're up there. And at your funeral, you know, everybody was playing. His whole, the, the whole choir loft uh, was chuck full of his ex-students that are playing. Phil Smith and Schluter and all those guys were up there. I knew I was going to be a basket case. I, I, I was invited. I didn't play. I sat down and just cried like a baby. Anyway, eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Love you all.